Three, two, one. Broadcasting from warm, sunny Florida at the downtown Newport Ritchie Sand Peak Realty Studio, this is SP Real Simple with your host, Steve Lucar. So we'll go ahead and get started. Get started. How are we doing today? Doing good. It's been a, it's been a day, but it's Friday. We're here. We made it's it. Friday, the Friday. Weekend. Woo! The weekend. Actually, we met last Friday. Last Friday night, we did. Yeah, that was a that was a fun night. I was that was a blast. <laughs> that was a blast for sure. I uh, I that was a that was a long night. Really, I remember uh, the next morning going, "Holy Jesus, what the heck happened?" Yeah, it was a long night, and I usually don't stay out like that because like my buddies were down at Skinny's. Yeah, and then I was like, "Hey, you guys should come over to downtown." They're like, "We're not going downtown ever again." And I was like, "Okay, well then don't come." And I was talking to you, and I turned around, and there they are. And oh, I was like, well, funny. great, here's 20 bucks. I'll meet you over at the village, because I'm not staying here. You go over there, and I'll meet you over there. Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> that was fun. It was a good time. Well, let's introduce you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Keith McKillop, uh, owner of Much Less Insurance, um, an independent agency that we, me and my mother started last January. Yeah. So about a year and a half now. Okay. Rolling How's down, it going? Rolling down the road. Rolling. For a long time, I was rolling that ball up a hill. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, which it's is probably miserable. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, just building a business in general, I think, is tough. Oh, yeah. At 28 years old. Yeah. yeah. And then I took my mom from somewhere where she was established for the last 20 years. And I said, if this is what we're going to do, we're going to do it right now. Was she, um, so she was in that same business? Yeah. So okay. my mom uh, started in the real estate business. Uh, she was a transaction coordinator. So she was helping everyone get all the files to closing and all that stuff. And then my dad was a loan officer, so he would get the mortgages. So they kind of worked hand in hand. They used to work Premier Mortgage. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember them. They used to were at the they were at the collision building right there on okay. uh, Main Street for like a long time. They, they closed down, but that was my childhood. They did that. Then my mom opened up her own agent, like her own little company doing it. And then she got an insurance in like 2006, 2007. She's got a background in it that yeah, helps yeah. a lot, oh, especially yeah. build, you know, running your own business. If you were to just start out, I can't imagine. That's is that's probably why you can't get your broker's license for real estate until you've been in the business at least two years. Oh, imagine how many people would have uh, started a just brokerage start right with now. a brokerage. Yeah, and that's what they would have done. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they would have freaking failed miserably. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't have if they would have started like two years ago, but mm -hmm. probably a lot. Yeah. Because I can only imagine that first file going to closing. Oh man! So you're 28. So I mean, you got you got building. Like you you could build. That's that's a good age to be starting a business like this because, you know. Oh, I got yeah. I can expand. You got I've years been doing this of, since I was 17 though. Yeah. Yeah. I, w I was selling. I've been selling insurance since I was 17. So you were born here? Uh, no, born in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. We moved down here when I was the Windy five. City. Yeah. And the good part, like, uh, or like the shameless area. Oh, uh, the good part. Okay. But my family sure reminds me of Shameless. So 100%, that show 100%. was awesome. I love that show. That freaking dad, man. Frank Gallagher. Frank, Jesus. Like, you think, oh, it's like Dumb and Dumber. Like, that's you know, what at the very it, that's end. That's what makes it funny. I know. That's it's like the very funny. end of Dumb and Dumber, and they're like, I'm sorry, my friend's a little slow. The town's actually two miles that way. <laughs> But it's also like, um, how many American families can relate to like that? Probably a lot. I don't Especially know. I got here. I have like a, a, I guess a unique situation. My family, everybody gets along. Everybody does decent. You know, like we're not nobody's like crazy killing it. But right. um, everybody, how like has the jobs. They make their bills, and we all get along. We have family events, and nobody fights. And it's like normal. Yeah, it's very normal. Not dysfunctional at all. No, yeah. we don't have that much of that. Mine's the complete opposite. Yeah. The complete opposite. Yeah, well, I do have, so like my wife's side of the family, her sister and her don't get along, and there's some drama and different things, and I don't know. I see I see, I see, see family drama quite a bit, but I don't know. My direct family is pretty... Pretty normal, yeah. kind of boring. Oh well, I mean, but now you can watch everyone else, like your wife's yeah. side of the family, and kind of yeah. get a little bit of taste of what the rest of us have been going through. Yeah, I used to have to watch Jerry Springer to see that kind of stuff. Oh, you know, rest when I was peace. a kid. Rest in peace, Jerry, <laughs> man. And you know, I found out later in life, all that scripted. Yeah, so I had um, I had uh, girls I went to high school with, and they were on the show, and um, they were 
strippers like on the show or like yeah in the crowd? no they were on the show oh man yeah so they were um strippers down at um mons venus and the one her boyfriend her and her boyfriend and the sister went on and the sister was telling the other sister like i don't think it's okay that you're doing what you're doing and he needs to know and all this stuff and i don't know there was like a whole thing and i'm like is even going on here uh, like good old tampa florida <laughs> but it was all scripted and they just were there you know you get a free trip out there and you get to they put you up in a hotel and you get to have fun and whatever and they get the i don't think TV. they even make that much money but 15 minutes of fame yeah i remember sitting next to well i remember seeing both of them in school and like the older sister smoking hot the other sister smoking hot but i sat next to her in math class wow. and we're going dang and then my buddy was dating her for a little while and then I went to Mons, and here she comes out on the stage, and I'm like, "No way, no!" <laughs> and she literally starts dancing, and she's right in front of me, showing me everything. And then she realized she looked down and saw me, and went, oh, and she runs off the stage, and she's like, "I'm so embarrassed." I'm like, "I don't know, whatever it is, this what is, it is." This is the profession you chose. Like, yeah, you like, what are you embarrassed happen? about? This yeah. is what you do. And make money doing it. Yeah, too. probably make more money than me. Make me a woman, please, man. Tell me. Yeah. Women have a, they have like a different, uh, like even in real estate, if you're a good looking woman, you're going to make money. Well, y- you can, uh, like people gravitate towards good looking women. Yeah. It's hard, like for us ugly guys, you know, nobody cares about us. <laughs> Why well, not? They don't. You're right. But it's funny, I was having a conversation yeah. earlier with my sister in law. And I was walking through the store, and I was like, damn, I mean, like, I wish I was just ugly. She goes, you are. And I was like, you. Like, <laughs> I didn't want you to tell me the truth. Please, man, let's be quiet about it. But, uh, no. Well, yeah, even if you're a decent-looking guy, it's not like, I don't know, girls don't, uh, you're not going to find a girl that's going to go hire a real estate agent because, or an insurance agent, just because they think, oh, he's a decent-looking guy. You know, but there Especially are with guys that are, for it. There are guys that are gonna go. She's decent looking. I'll go with her. I'll give her a couple. I'll give her a couple extra bucks a month just to talk to her. Well, or I'll sign up with her over this guy because she's. I'd rather talk to her. I like looking at her more than I like looking at that guy. Listen, if <laughs> if it happened to me, I'd make money. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, I'm in yeah. the wrong. I was just man. I have friends that are uh, uh, lesbians and stuff, and I'm like, I get it. Like. I don't know why my wife likes me. Like, I don't understand it. Like, if I was a girl, I would be a lesbian. Like, I don't understand. Guys women, are gross. Women are beautiful. I'm, yeah. You know? God's uh, creation, man. Can't, yeah. can't beat it. Yeah. So where did you, uh, did you grow up in Chicago? Uh, no, we moved down here when I was five. Five. Yeah. My, um, my sister was born with cancer. So she had cancer, my older sister, from the time she was four and a half weeks old to the time she was four. Wow. Neuroblastoma, yeah. So, like, brain tumor, stomach tumors, the whole nine. Oh, my so gosh. My, I'm one of five. Um, my, my parents had to have more kids to like for core blood and all that crazy stuff. So that's why there's so many of us running around. Wow. And then we moved down here because my grandparents on my mom's side, my grandpa was having some like open heart surgery, some like veins put somewhere. And we bought a house and moved down here to help with that. Cause my grandma was a full-time pediatrician. Um, so we did that, and then I've been stuck here ever since. Awesome. Stuck? You want to go awesome somewhere Florida. else? I've lived all over the place. Um, before I started my agency, I was working for another company, and I was kind of traveling, and I was in a couple different states, and nothing, and that sounds terrible, this isn't even going to come out of my mouth, but nothing feels like Hudson, Florida. <laughs> and that's terrible, because there's a whole world out there. Like, I would move back to Iowa tomorrow. Yeah? Just cornfields for miles, two-lane roads, nice people. Just, yeah. Just, you know. Quiet, it's a different quietness. world. I think the cold, though, like those winters. Mm. Turn the furnace on. I know, but when I would it's, rather it's, put more clothes on because I can only take so many off before I go to jail. Yeah, but you're not gonna like die from heat here. You could. It could it's gonna be a you scorcher could. this year. Watch. But you it. can always go find a shady spot. Yeah, and just hang out in the shade. You can always find a nice bar with the heat on somewhere or a fire. I don't know, man. You, you you lose power. You lose everything. You're stuck out there for a couple of weeks in the snow, and you could freeze to death easily. You wreck your car into a ditch, and then you're stuck. Then you're toast. Yeah. I would go back in a heartbeat. But nothing feels like here. Nothing. And I'm mad that all the Yanks are moving here. Yeah. Because I ride a motorcycle, like, around town here, too. 
Uh, that's and dangerous. The, um, uh, especially with no helmet <laughs> on, you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. The amount of people, like more people that are here now within the last like three or four years, which mm-hmm. is what there was, it's miserable. So I've been here for my entire life. Um, I'm fourth generation, so wow. um, you know, my great-grandparents are from here. And um, it's definitely not the same. Changed just from when I was a kid. Like I just remember when I was in high school, you'd driving around like you go down ridge road and there's like you know a couple cars here and there you stop at a stoplight you might have three four cars around you oh now there's hundreds yeah there's backed up sometimes you hit the light turns green people go and then you watch the light turn red and then you still don't make the light no i drive (laughs) every day from holiday to 52 every single day without fail it takes me 30 35 minutes sometimes to go 15 minutes down the road which is ridiculous Wow. It's a literally, a, it's a 15 minute drive if there's nobody on the road. And it takes me 30, 35 minutes every day. Ugh. Because traffic is so miserable. So, what, uh, what school did you go to? I went to two high schools, actually. I went to 5A and I went to Hudson. So, started my freshman year at 5A, finished my freshman year at Hudson, started my sophomore year at Hudson, finished my sophomore year at 5A, did my whole junior year at Hudson, and my whole senior year at 5A. So what, you got a Cobra or? Uh, I graduated a Falcon. Okay. Yeah, which is okay. Ten years, ten years ago, graduated high school, ten years in June. That's nothing. It's crazy. <laughs> I look back on it now and I'm like, holy crap, ten years ago is crazy. Uh, Somebody shared a picture. Did you play Facebook. sports or anything? I played basketball, yeah. Okay. I play basketball. I still play. I still get out there and play with my guys from church over in Trinity once a week, so. Yeah, I got a, so I played basketball, um. I think, uh, so after I graduated, I did an alumni football game and blew my knee out. Oof. And, um, and we were actually playing, well, playing we, were, we were playing, playing Hudson. No, it was full on everything, full pads, the really? whole, whole real deal, man. They we stopped were, doing that after you blew your knee out, I bet. No, no, they kept doing it. They didn't care about me. I don't even <laughs> think they checked in on me. I was just <laughs> like, tough luck, buddy. That's I crazy. actually, it's funny, I blew my knee out, the, um, like the first, I don't know, it was probably after the first quarter. And then, um, like, I I knew something was wrong with it. But then we went in at halftime, and I'm, like, stretching and, like, moving around. I'm like, well, I can move it. And I'm, like, doing stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, fuck it, I'll go back out. Second half, kickoff, I go. I go to turn. <laughs> it goes sideways again. I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's it. it. I'm, yep, done. I'm done. No more. <laughs> Too old for that crap. So. Yeah, and then I kind of slacked off on, like, because I can't go half speed with sports. You got to go 100%. If I'm playing, I'm, like, it's weird. Like, I'm just calm and mellow, like, pretty much always until, like, like that whistle blows or I step on the court. And then I'm, like, like, just playing volleyball with kids or whatever. I'm, like, diving for stuff. Oh, yeah, I got to jump up and stuff. I I can't help it. I just have to go. You got to be careful now. I know. Well, then I blew my knee out again playing volleyball. Oh. So, Same knee? Yeah. yeah. You get it fixed? Yeah, twice. And now I'm like, screw it. I just won't play sports because oh, I, no. I can't. Uh, just wear a knee brace. Eh, Listen, we got guys that. who play basketball with us. I think his name's Timmy. He's probably in his, he, I know he's in his 50s for sure. That man will run me up and down the court. He'd run me out the gym if he could. Yeah. And he's out there just killing it every week. Where do you play? Uh, with my guys at uh, Elfers Christian in Trinity. At the church I go to, there's um there's a school attached to it, and inside the school there's a gym. So we all get together one you know eight thirty at night on a Tuesday every week. We all get together and we play till like ten ten thirty, hmm. and we all go home. So Elfers Gym, mm-hmm. you know where Elfers is? Uh, well, it's kind of where I live, right there on Grand and Fifty Four. Oh okay. Yeah. So I went to Midi Pelock. Oh, elementary. Or, oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that or, still around? No, they just shut it down uh, like last year. Man. And I went to Ridgewood, and they shut that down. I don't yeah. fucking know how many schools left. No, they they just they just tore down golf. Yeah. And then Hudson, they well, changed Hudson. I didn't go to schools. golf, so I went to golf middle. They haven't torn that down yet, so I have one left. I thought it was attached to the high school, no? No, golf middle is um, it's further. So you go up uh, Madison, and it's uh, north on Madison. You go over the bridge, and you make a right, and it's, it's right, right there. back there. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got one left. Yeah. That'll be a couple for now. A couple of years for we'll the down five A. I think it was a forty eight million dollar school uh, they built. It's frustrating. So my dad was on the school board, and um, like he was so against them 
building it? Well, no, taking uh, like Ridgewood when they took Ridgewood and made it into a trade school. He was like, this is a horrible idea. Like, you know how expensive it is? And we're like, we, we don't have enough room for the high schools we have. Why are we shutting a high school down? Yeah, when we don't have enough room for the, all these kids. Right. And they had to disperse all those kids to other schools that don't have enough room. Uh, just none of it made sense. And it's shutting the P lockdown. I don't know. They just did a, like a freaking like $30 million, $40 million uh, addition to the school like two years before that. And then close it down. And then they close it down. It's just taxpayer dollars being spent on nothing. Yeah. Like, and I watched it all. Do you know what the uh, the school board budget is annually? Uh, I'm going to throw out a number out here. Probably $100 million. Not even close. More or less. Oh, gosh. You're so far off. Like, left or right? You're low, 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 low. Oh, man. A billion dollars? When my dad was there, it was like $3.3 billion a year. This is a, this a is the school budget, the school board budget. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of freaking money. To do what? I don't know. They There's so much. These teachers need raises, though, for sure. For sure. These kids these days, yeah. there's no way. Yeah. They need to bring the paddle back. I joke with my, my buddy is an AP at a high school here. And, he, and I joke with him all the time. And he's like, Kiefer, like, I I'm, I couldn't. Like, if you were a teacher, you'd bring these kids next time. I'm like, you're damn right I would. Yeah. They, I got, that's what they need. So my, my dad, he was an administrator. Um, my mom was a teacher. My wife was a teacher. Um, and I'm like, I could not do that. For $45,000 a year. $50,000 a year. No. My buddy, he, um, he does the, um, <clears throat> it's like the intervention so, like, if a high school kid's, like, in risk of failing or dropping out or whatever, you know, he kind of steps in and tries to help them out and does all this stuff. And those are usually the kids that have problems. And yeah. and I listen to stories. I'm like, Jesus. And he didn't punch the kid in the face. No, nope, can't do that. I'm like, I would have punched the kid in the face. And it goes back to parents not being parents. I'm like, <laughs> my generation is, like, having children. And my generation is what's ruining the damn world. Yeah, because it's all these left punks thinking that things are gonna go. No, it's not how that works. Like, and nothing's free. Everybody owes me something. Yeah, entitlement. That's what mm-hmm. it is. Nothing's free. You're not gonna get anything for free. Like all this student loan debt that you don't have to pay, I don't have to pay it. Right. Because, Somebody's gotta pay know, it. And I, I didn't go to college. I didn't have money for college. Right. I didn't take out a loan because I you know, didn't have money. So why am I? Not that I needed to go to college. I had a career. Thank God, like right out of high school. But if I let's say I took out student loans, why would I do that? I can't pay them back. Yeah. And then expect me to pay him when I did? Nah, out of your mind. I mean, we just paid off my wife's student loans um, like three or four years ago. She's been paying on those for 25 years. Is the government going to give you a check back? No. Since they canceled no, all that no student luck. loan debt? No luck for me. Yep. See? <laughs> and now you get to pay everybody else's too. Isn't that great? Yeah. My generation thinks that's okay. And it's not. Well, it's not. I don't agree with it. But what do we know? Nothing. Just a guy sells insurance. <laughs> That's all I know. I'm just trying to build a real estate company, you know. Just trying to do the right thing, honestly. Do the right thing. And I feel like everyone else around me doesn't do the right thing, and they get rewarded and blessed. And I'm like, man, here I am just. I don't know. I feel like it, it'll. it Come back around? Yeah. The, the cream rises to the top. Those people aren't ever going to really go anywhere, really. No. You know. So, you know. Ten years from now, they're going to still be wondering where their free stuff is, and everybody else will be like, "Remember when we were saying you should work for your, your money, and like you should probably live put welfare. forth some effort and get a job, do that kind of stuff." Well, well, here we are. It's just entitlement. Where it came from, I don't know. Yeah, I don't feel that. I've never been given anything in my life. I've worked for everything I had. I feel like social media and a lot of the, um, like the, um, I don't know, like. Remember reality shows? Like comparing? Yeah, like so the the reality shows were like, everybody seems like their life is so interesting and so cool. and well, They're letting you see what, what they want you to see. Exactly. Yeah, they can edit that. So like even up with the Kardashians, all oh, that's yeah. edited. And oh, for sure. They're the executive producer, so they're not going to show you anything they don't want to show you. Right. And that's the way that goes. Like, people don't see that. Nope. No, nope. they just nope. see the fancy cars and the money and the trips and all mm-hmm. the great moments, but you don't see the really sad stuff unless they want you to see. Well, it. and they bust their ass. They, I mean, they're probably working their ass off to get that show where it is. You know, they're that's not an easy job. Oh no, you well, know, I mean, Chris Jenner definitely has you know an iron fist there for sure. Yeah, but they're making massive amounts of money, like right. a disgusting amount of money. Yeah, 
but they're putting in the work. I mean, they're just living their life. It seems like they're not. It seems like they're just doing nothing. Yeah. But putting the product lines and all the other stuff that they have going oh, yeah, on. yeah, they're busy, for sure. They're nonstop. But um, money makes money. That's the only and way. That's the only way you get to the top is you work hard, harder than the yeah. next person. We were just talking uh, to our team about how um, there was a guy. <clears throat> he had two cousins, and they both started their businesses around the same time, different businesses. But one was struggling really bad, and um, the other one, the other cousin, was kicking ass and doing really well. Two or three years in, he's like flying up. And just doing really well. And so the cousin that wasn't doing well said, hey, uh, um, I'm curious, like, I need to know, like, what you're doing. Like, how do you how do you do it? How do you how do you how are you building your company so well? And I'm struggling so bad. Um, He says, well, I mean, I can there there is a secret to it. I can tell you, but you're not going to want to hear it. And he's like, no, I want to hear it. What do you mean? I don't want to hear it. I'm asking you. I want to know. He goes, well. Um, I'll tell you, um, be at my office at 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. And he's like, I don't work on Sunday mornings. Exactly. Especially at 6 a.m. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't stop. I told you you wouldn't want to hear it. Yeah, exactly. Cause, <laughs> but it doesn't stop. Like right. My phone all day long. It's the same thing. Yeah. And here and I am at like 8 o'clock. I'm doing this. Yeah. I'll probably be down there answering emails, you know, till 9, 10 o'clock yeah. at night. Because that's what has to get done. Yeah, because no one's gonna do you it. Gotta you gotta work. Yeah. You gotta put in the time. You gotta want it. A lot of people don't though, but then it comes back to the entitlement thing, you know? Because not a lot of people who are twenty eight years old, like at least like in my age bracket, like they're working for somebody else. They've never really wanted anything, never really had mm-hmm. anything. But like it takes sacrifice to get something. Like, yeah. you know, I took every lot like I, I had a house in Beacon Woods, I sold it when I moved and I made a bunch of money on it because I bought it when the market was really low and I sold it right as it was kinda like at I mean it's still high, but like towards the beginning when things started kind of getting hot mm-hmm. and I made a decent amount of money paid off some debt bought a truck bought a motorcycle and then like I had money saved so when I was sitting in Texas and I decided that I was going to like open up an agency here in Florida I took every last dollar I had and dumped it into the to the company yeah. every la- all my savings everything like my safety net everything I've worked for right there boom took a chance yep yeah. and yeah. I'll be damned if I let it fail yeah absolutely not well that's something that um, when you're given money, you don't take it for you. You take that money for granted. If someone says, "Here, I'll just give you this," then you're gonna go, "Oh, thanks," you know, whatever. So I'll just get more. I'll, I'll just ask right. for more. I never think I'm gonna have any more. Right. And that's I think that's what keeps me going. It's like I never think I'm gonna have that much money ever again. So I need to keep it going. Well, and you want to replace that money? Yeah, of course. Build yeah. it back. Yeah, make more. Yeah, which is nice. I mean, like I said, we're a year and a half in now. And, like, things are kind of, like, that ball is, I'm not rolling it uphill anymore. Maybe I'm on level ground, and I'm starting to gain momentum heading back down the way. But that's the whole plan, you know, just to be able to, like, have my mom retire. My mom worked for these people for 20 years, and, like, she never had a paid vacation, never had a sick day, never nothing for 20 years. Mm. And I said, okay, like, this is, like, you're never going to retire. No 401K, no benefits, no nothing. Just go to work every day and and run my agency for me, and I'm going to go out and drink and do whatever I want to do. And that's fine. There, and that's fine. You have you have that. That's yours. You can do that. Right. But I told my mom, absolutely not. You're going to do that anymore. You're 61 years old. My dad died three years ago. Like, my parents never really had anything. So you're going to have something now. Right. You'll be able to retire, take the grandkids wherever you want to go, have money, and, like, not worry about it. But it's going to be hard, like I told her. It is, and, yeah. And I told her, I said, we're going to re- really have to work the next couple of years. I said, but then, like, you'll be good. Yeah. You'll be able to relax, slow down, and, like, enjoy, you know, from, like, 65 to, like, however long she has left, hopefully yeah. for, hopefully forever. But right. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. I mean, that's a great plan. That's ideal. If it works. Well, you got to make it, it work. But it's going to. Cause the only I'll way it's going to work is if you make it work. Yeah. I can't let it fail. I won't. No way. That's awesome. I'll get, I'll get rid of everything I have and sleep in my office if I have to to make it work. Yeah. But I, hopefully, I don't have but to But see, the that. fact that you're willing to do that is why it will work. Oh, yeah. When I was living in Texas, I would drive here once once a month and stay, stay for a week. Stay in my office for a week. It's 896 miles one way. Where Just, at in Texas? Uh, Beaumont. It's so like southeast Texas. Okay. Hour and a half east of Houston. So I was there for a year. Hour and a half east of Houston. Okay. I was closer to Louisiana than I was anywhere else. Um, little oil refinery town. Just 
people working at plants from all over the world. Could fish them off there. No. The water was as dark as your cup. Yeah, but you get off you, you get offshore a little ways and you're in tuna town. No, they well they're off they're offshore drilling out there. You ever yeah, no, but they all they hang out in the rigs. I was just in Louisiana. Disgusting. Once you get out in about three or four hundred foot of water, it clears up. It clears up and there's freaking tuna and stuff everywhere. I went to Galveston and I was going to puke. Like the water was literally (laughs) as black as that. Yeah, I'm sure. It was disgusting. So, yeah, when we were going out, I mean, the water was looked like chocolate milk. Yeah, disgusting because of all the sediment being churned up from Mm -hmm. the drill and stuff. Well, I think a lot of it was from the river because we we went out the the Mississippi River. Oh, okay. So, but you do have a ton of like... uh, you know, ships and stuff going in and out. So oh, it's, yeah. that's all getting churned up from that. But, um, yeah, once we got offshore, it was wild. We hit one spot where there was freaking sharks jumping out of the water and there's yeah. tuna jumping out of the water. It was just mayhem. It was crazy. Throw them in the boat. Just put a net out, throw them in the boat, catch them. We didn't have a net. We are trolling. We didn't do any good. My buddy just went deep sea fishing Wednesday. Yeah? Yeah, him and his dad and my other buddy and his brother went out out of Dunedin. And they okay. got some grouper and stuff. He was like, you want to come? I said, no. Not a big fisherman. Not a big. No. No. I look like we're going to go on the boat on Sunday. We're going to go to the island. I just want to sit down. Listen hang to out and chill. Yeah. Sit down, listen to music, drink a beer and be done with it. Yeah. See, I like to, I like to do both. I love fishing. I love hanging out and drinking too. So sometimes I'll just uh, get some bait. Like you get a, if you can find a stingray or a mullet or something and cut, cut it in half and chuck it off the back of the boat. Shark fishing. And just wait and just sit there and hang out and drink. And all of a sudden you see a pole going, Meh. Pull her on in. There you go. You keep the shark, you let it go. Yeah, we should let him go. Depends on the shark. If it's a nice black tip or something, maybe keep it. Keep it. Get some yeah. nuggets out of it. Yeah, steaks. Shark steaks. Not a big fisherman. Not yeah. into it. I'll go. I'll go and I'll, ha- I'll bring all the beer, bring all the subs, whatever you want to do, but I'm no desire. So I hunt, too. And I'm like, there's so many people that are, they don't hunt, they don't fish, which is perfect for me because it's already crowded. Yeah, you I go stay, out to fishing you stay spots. out of the woods, you stay out of the water. Yeah, and that's fine. Out. Don't do it, you know. Good. My uh, guys from church, um, their father-in-law owns 1,200 acres up in Cuthbert, Georgia. And I went up there. They, I drove up there in November with the guys, and, you know, we did hunting and stuff out there and didn't catch anything, didn't shoot anything, nothing. And then we did a, we do a men's retreat from the church, so all the men can come up, you know, pay like 45 bucks. Everyone drives up, sees the weekend, you know. We have devotional every night. Everyone hangs out, cook, hunt, whatever. Had a blast. Yeah. It was like probably 30 guys this year. Yeah, I think a lot of times um, the days where I sit there and hunt and don't shoot anything is like that's perfectly fine. That's like almost better. But now you're some, up early in the morning. Oh, yeah. And that, yeah, see, I'm, I'm not a morning guy at all. Yeah. I remember me and James went and got up in a tree stand and I was asleep. I slept the whole time. <laughs> I just not, it's not for me. I'm not, I can't be, and I can't be quiet long enough. You don't watch all the stuff. He's just being still and watching like all the birds and watching this little squirrel. Like, what's he doing over there? Oh, look, a hawk tried to get him. He, he got away. That's cool. I had an owl. I was just telling the guy that was here earlier, I was just telling him I had an owl come in and freaking grab a squirrel off a tree limb, like right in front of my face. Really? It, like right at first light. Wow. That's pretty wild. I mean, you see cool stuff. Otters come through or you get who knows what. There's just always something weird happening. And you're hunting here in, in Pasco? I hunt here. I hunt um, uh, Alabama, Georgia. Um, past couple of years, I've been going to Kansas. Really? Yeah, Kansas is awesome. What's in Kansas? It's just monster deer. They got cornfields everywhere, so they're all corn fed and big, fat, giant Angle. monster freaks. Yeah, ten pointers. Good for you. Oh yeah, they're well. The biggest one I have is thirteen point. Um, but really, it's funny because you can have a thirteen point that's not that big, and you can have a ten pointer that's way bigger than the thirteen point. Like so like the spread all, is different. Yeah, it's like a big wider spread, more mass. Just they they do like um, the way you gauge a, a a deer, the antler size. It's uh, by like square inches. So they do the circumference by the length. Really? So that's how they measure it. So like a in Florida, like a hundred inch deer is a that's like state registry. Like that's a really big nice deer. I don't think I've ever gotten one. I don't know if I measured any of the the bigger ones, but. I don't think I've gotten one that's over 100 inches, but you get into like um, uh, like Iowa or not Iowa. Um, um, what is that? Um, Chicago. What state is that? Wisconsin, Illinois. Illinois. So Illinois has like 
um, a county, Pike County, Illinois, is like has the, the most bucks in one per, in, capita. per capita. Like for every square, for every acre, there's like X amount of bucks. It's, really? it's crazy. Like it's r- unbelievable hunting. They're not as big as like Iowa has monsters and uh, Kansas has like bigger deer. Because well, they're all competing in the same yeah. area for the same stuff. The whole gene pool is kind of messed up because there's so many. Uh, but like a like 130 inch deer is very common there, uh, but you really don't get much bigger than like, you know, like a 160 or so is like really? probably about as big as you're gonna get. Whereas you get um, like my biggest one is a as 152, and that was Kansas, and that was, that was like kind of an average deer for in Kansas for Kansas, and then Iowa's really good too. A, like listen, everyone out in Iowa was bigger. Let me tell you. <laughs> I have, I have some of the biggest people I've seen in my life right now. Oh, yeah, well, and they got to stay warm. It, it, <laughs> and honestly, it wasn't that cold because I went up in, like, February. And I, mm. I remember I flew in to, like, see, like, because I was selling insurance. And um, we were purchasing this book of business. They needed a manager in place. So I flew up. And I flew out of Florida. It was, like, 85 degrees. Shorts, berries, a T-shirt, and a hat. And landed in, in Moline, Illinois. Because it was like Moline and like the Quad Cities, it was Davenport, Bettendorf, Moline, and Rock Island. So like Iowa was like right there, and it was like fifteen degrees and snowing. And I get off the plane, and I'm like, what the heck? And everyone's looking at me, and everyone's all bundled up, and I'm like, why are you guys all staring at me like this? I came from Florida, and I went outside to get the, the truck, the rental car. Holy macaroni! Not for me. Yeah, it was cold. Oh yeah, the first time I saw snow, like real snow. Like, I've seen patches and little flurries and stuff, but never really saw, like, actual Compact snow. snow. And um, we were, I was in Kansas hunting, and um, my buddy Travis that that we that I hunt with, he has, like, a, a bunch of properties that he leases that we get to hunt. Right. And then I pay him, you know, to take me on these properties. So we stay at his place. Um, we went out to eat, and then we come back, and it's, like, starting to snow. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, pretty heavy tomorrow. And I had... I think I just shot a deer. I don't remember. But the next next morning, um, I get up, and there's fucking, like, a foot of snow everywhere. Really? I was like, holy shit, this is wild. Winter Wonderland. Yeah. And I go, we, we go driving around, and I'm like, dude, look at that. There's snow on the houses. There's snow on the fence post. Look, it's on this tree. Like, like, that's so that, crazy. And he's like, what is your freaking problem? I go, this is unbelievable. It's like, I've awesome. never seen this before. Right. And he's like, it's snow, dude. Like, yeah. I go, shut up, asshole. This is the same thing you do when you come to Florida and you see a dolphin for the first time. Okay? Yeah, you're like, what is that? And you're like, oh, my God, it's a dolphin. <laughs> Let's flip her. Oh. You freak out. This is me right now, so I'm freak having my out. moments, so deal with it. <laughs> no, when I, like, well, obviously, like, growing up in Chicago, like, I have, like, vivid memories of, like, going down, like, sledding and stuff with my parents and, like, my siblings. But, like, I don't have any, like, fond memories of snow. So I was sitting having dinner in Iowa one night, like, you know, by myself having dinner at this restaurant. And, like, my phone is, like, going crazy, like, with this, like, alert. And, like, snow flurries coming in, like, 10 minutes. I'm, like, snow flurries. Everyone leaves the damn restaurant. I'm, like, and I'm here. Ghost I'm, here I am by myself at this high top. Like, what the hell is going on? Why did everyone just leave? They paid their bills and left. Well, sure enough, I go outside. And it's, like, a damn blizzard. And it is just coming down. I'm, like, that's why everybody left. Mm. Hat flew off my head. The truck's in the middle of the parking lot. I feel like it was, like, sliding away from me. It was miserable. <laughs> And I was like, that's why everybody left. They all went yeah. back to the hotel to be nice and cozy. Yeah, you rarely see people uh, retire from Florida and move up north somewhere. Never. people, And everyone's moving here now. Yeah. All the Yanks go back home. <laughs> now, I bought my motorcycle in Iowa, so I have an Iowa tag on it still. I always said at one time, I, uh, well, way back when people were really starting to move in, before I was in real estate and stuff, I would say, man, it'd be so nice if they only opened the northbound lanes for like, for like a couple months. You can only drive north. You can only leave. You can't come in. Yeah. Just flip them off. Not a bad idea. <laughs> but what's the statistic? Like the statistic of like people moving here? Like thousand uh, people a day? Uh, it's like, uh, I think it's a little more, but like twelve or 1,300. A day. Mm-hmm. That's reasonable. Yeah. Most of them are legals. No, yeah. I mean, they're coming from out of state. They're buying houses cash. I mean, I Yeah, but there's, they're shipping people all over the place. I don't know. That's like... We're going to run out of room. I'm kind of over it. Yeah. Go down to yeah. the Keys or something. I don't Go. know if we're going to run out of room. I think like these a lot of these bigger cities are getting built up quite a bit. Like, I don't know. I grew up here when there was, you know, the, all the orange fields and stuff that I used to screw around in and go. No, they're all gone. They're, yeah, they're gone. They're apartment buildings. They're, or like or? off of uh, uh, Little Road 
by the kind of south of the courthouse and stuff. All those woods out there, that's where we partied. That was like our main party spot. That's flat. It's going to be all Developing homes. Yeah, but like our our roads can't handle any of this. Like I'm waiting for it. I'm like, okay, like this is awesome. Our schools can't either. Where are they going to put all these kids? I mean, I think it's great for me because like these people need insurance. It's great for you. People need to buy houses. So awesome. But you're right. Where is all these cars going to go? Where are all these kids going to go? Well, we don't have enough room. The worst is the apartment complexes they're building. They're building these giant, like, four-story, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, you can charge $1,800 a month for an apartment now. I remember when I got my first apartment, it was 800, 850 bucks. I think. Water was included. You know, not anymore. Water was included. 850 bucks a month was a 2-2. A 2-2 now in this same area in Port Ritchie where, you know, salaries haven't gone up, not probably by much. It's like $1,800. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. I don't know how people afford it. I don't know. They, I, get, they get roommates. Yeah. They have only fans. Someone asked me, uh, um, I was doing an interview with the city of New Perchy, and they, uh, they said, so what, what's your advice to, you know, these younger kids and stuff? You know, how are they going to afford these homes? I said, they're going to have to get good jobs and make a lot more money. And leave. Go yeah. somewhere either else. That, either leave or make, make a lot of money and do what you can. Tampa's a, and Florida's the most expensive state to live in. Tampa is ranked number one. Really? Average rent. Over California? Average rent, $2,600 a month in Tampa. Hmm. I would think New York would still be way higher. Everyone left. They're all here. (laughs) They're still in New York. I feel like Florida is going to turn into California or New York within the next 10 years. Yeah. I think it's a... Like, even just finding finding parking down here, it's what? It's 7... It's 8 o'clock right now. I got here at 7 o'clock. I had to park over by that new brick oven pizza place way out yonder because there was mm-hmm. no parking spots anywhere. Yeah. And they built that parking garage. My truck doesn't fit in there, but. Yeah, that's another problem. That parking garage is too far away. Way too far away. Yeah. People aren't walking that far to go. They have like a little shuttle thing, I think. But that only runs. It doesn't run all night long. Yeah, I think it runs pretty late. Should be still running. Not past 10 o'clock. No. I don't know. I've never taken it. I got a buddy that has a golf cart, and I just call him. He's like, my, he, we, call, we call him the Goober. Goober? He's like Uber, but with a G. Goober. Goober. The okay. golf cart Uber. Well, all right. That's nice. <laughs> Goober. Honestly, that's a nice little business model. Yeah. I could start right there. Goober. He doesn't even charge me. He's just like, yeah, come on, let's go. And he just wants to go bar he hopping to, with you. just wants to drive his yeah. golf cart around. He just wants to go bar hopping. He's fun. Last Why? time I was hanging out with him, I ended up at uh, the American Legion. Oh, Man. He's like, come on, I'll get you in. Like, dollar beers, whatever. It was awesome. How do you get into the American Legion? Uh, you got to have, like, family that was uh, in the military. My grandpa was on some aircraft carrier. Maybe I can have a there dollar you go. beer. That's how they let me in. My grandfather was in the military. They didn't ask anything. They just said, okay, great. Yeah. Well, I was with him, too, so they were like, no. okay. My buddy's in the uh, reserves. Maybe I can just take him with me. Where you're, it's your where brother, you're. right? Uh, we're like brothers, yeah. No, since I was four. But he's my brother, yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Not Close blood, enough. But yeah. Close enough. Yeah, works for me. Yeah. There you go. So what do you got? Uh, what do you do for fun? Um, sleep. No, I'm just kidding. I, I play basketball. I do that every week. I really enjoy that. Um, I'm, I work and I go to the gym. I work nine to six. I go to the gym from six to eight. And then I go home, feed the dogs. And that dog I just saved. So I got another one now. So I got to do that. And then... I, I try to go out and stay social because I'm an outgoing individual. You know, social battery um, is always high. Yeah. Um, so I I'll probably be out here hanging around, and then I'll go home. and No, yeah, just really hanging out. Cool. I, ride, I ride my motorcycle. That's enjoyable. I yeah. really really enjoy the heck out of that. Um, but it's getting hot again. Yeah. So. I wouldn't mind riding a motorcycle, like, out in the country somewhere. Like, go about an hour north of here and go into the freezer tomorrow night. Oh, there you go. You know, they're, they're uh, shrimp are from China. Uh, I mean, well, the um, <laughs> I usually go to the Drunken Mullet. Yeah. They burned down. Yeah. Caught fire. I think they have, like, they renamed it. Because somebody just bought it. It was for sale. So somebody just bought it. And, like, three months later, you burn it down. A little, a little fishy. Mm. A little fishy. Jewish lightning. It was like a kitchen fire in the back. It was, like, all over, like, Pasco News or whatever. That guy who owns that Facebook page. Yeah. Have you been to uh, Crump's? Never been to Crump's Landing. Crump's is cool. It's 
It's a cool place. It's out in Bayport, the food's isn't it? not as like it's it's just the food's okay. The atmosphere's awesome. Like it's just a cool setup the way they have it. I um there's a place in Land Lakes. I cannot think of the name of it right now. It's on the lake out there. Um on the one of many lakes. Oh um I know which one you're talking about too. I really enjoy the atmosphere. Like Yaya's or something like no, that. No, it's or, not Yaya's. Um, it's not, but it's like you or something like that. Ukuleles. Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that place. That's yeah, fun. That place is cool. I enjoy that a lot. Um, but no, I enjoy going out, bar hopping, different things, different places. Yeah. But I like going on the bike. It's so much nicer, you know. If I can get like a Saturday free to do something, you know, I go to church every Sunday, and yeah, cool, living the dream. Just a 28-year-old guy just trying to make a buck. There you go. That's it. That's it's all about. Well, how can uh, how can people get a hold of you? Um, we have a Facebook page, uh, Much Less Insurance. Uh, number at the office, 727-275-9060. Uh, my cell, 727-226-2542. Um, they shoot me an email, kefer at muchlessins.com. Um, or they can stop in the office and say hello, Monday through Friday, 9 to 6. Awesome. There every day. Cool. Living the dream. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. Yeah, this is fun. We should do it again. Uh, whenever you want. All right. I'll bring beer whenever you want. Whenever you, you want to bring do. a guest or bring somebody, we can we can set up another spot here if you, if you bring your mom in or something or whoever. Yeah, I don't know if she'd want to do that. <laughs> I would love her. Honestly, I would love her to get out, but she's just not. She really doesn't like. We got invited to join Rotary, Yeah. and it's not her speed. It's yeah. just, you know. Yeah, the Rotary keeps trying to get me on, like, I, I go to several of them for different things, but every time I go, the I was in Port Ritchie for about two years, and um, that was all right. Like, it's good. It's just the time commitment, and oh, if I'm yeah. going to do it, I want to go all in, and I don't want to just kind of half-ass it. So I feel bad telling them, no, 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 but I just know, like, my lifestyle and what I'm have to do every day and just it just doesn't fit uh, yeah i i just if i'm gonna do it i want to g- go all in and you want to do it the be right good way. at it yeah. and like just i want to be able to participate 100 percent and not get constantly 50. be telling you sorry can't make that event sorry can't do that one sorry can't do that i can't do this um can't be here can't be there like you're one person yeah, yeah. Uh, that that would annoy me i don't like telling people no um when they ask me for stuff so that's a one of those groups where they're going to ask you quite a bit. Oh yeah, they're they're going to ask a lot out of you, and you know it's, it's for a good cause. It is for sure. But I didn't realize how time demanding it was either until yeah. I said like they, we went to a meeting and we sat down and I was like, man, I I can't I can't do it, and yeah. I I think I have a lot of time, yeah. uh, but I don't I just unfortunately don't have time for that. But like you too, if I'm going to do it, I want to be able to do it the right way because it'll eat at me if I just give it like fifty percent when I know right. there's there's exactly. more I could do. I feel like in three or four years when my kids are kind of grown up a little more and driving, they're kind of more independent. Independent. I'll, uh, it'll, you know, give me a little more time to focus on different things and I'll be able to. You start your own rotary club. No, I don't want to do that. That's commi- that's commitment <laughs> that's too. too much. I definitely don't want to do that. I barely want to be in a rotary. So, <laughs> well, well, you know, if you could run it, then I mean, then you're just. Uh, yeah, but you still got to be there. And if you're the president or you you start it, like, and really, once you start one, it's not like it's, a it's always yours. It's yours until the next person becomes the president. Right. And then you, you step back and, and let them do their thing. It's nice. I love giving back. If I could yeah. make, if I could just give every dollar I make back to the community, I've done something right. Hmm. That's the plan. Let's give it all back. That's not very profitable way to look at it no but i mean but eventually it would make you feel good i just want to make enough money to where i could take care of myself my family and then do whatever something. excess yeah yeah if i can give i would love to get start a program something yeah. somewhere for kids underprivileged and i have a special needs school you can help if you want what school is that uh my son's school it's called reconnections education center i've never heard of that they're on gun highway um just south of 54 okay um we're doing a gala soon, so I'll invite you to that. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be uh, September 13th is the gala. Whatever it'll I can do. It'll be at the Spartan Manor. Whatever it's I can fun, do to help. Fun event. We'll have a good time. I know a DJ, too, if you need one. Yeah. We just booked a DJ. Uh, DJ Brownie? I don't know. Maybe it's the same guy. I don't no. know. We'll see. All right. <laughs> I know a lot of people, so that's awesome. a great thing about being in the industry, you know? It's nice. 
All right. Well, this has been fun. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. See you guys. It's been real, and we kept it simple. Who's next?